Hello everyone, this is Mr. Reyes. I am here to guide you with our lesson for today. Our learning objectives for today, the learner generates patterns of a sequence, illustrates finite and infinite sequences, finds the general term, first n terms, and missing terms of a sequence. Let us start with the brain teaser. You are about to find what are missing in the blank. Pause the video and start solving these logic problems. And the answers are, starting of number one, if you know how to count, the answers are E and T because they are the initials of our first 10 counting numbers. For the second item, the answers are J, A, S, O, N. Look at your wall. It hangs there because the reason is they are the initials of months. They are the initials in months of our calendar. And the last item, our answers are 100, 500, and 1,000 because you have learned during your elementary grades the about Roman numerals and the Hindu Arabic numbers. I hope you have fun of that. This is all about patterns. Finding and understanding patterns gives us special logic skills. And with patterns, we can also learn to predict the future, discover new things or understanding the world around us. And playing with patterns is also fun, like our brain teasers a while ago. And we can write it in the form of so-called sequence. Sequence is a set of numbers arranged in a pattern. Each number in a sequence is called a term. The first number is called the first term and is denoted by the symbol A sub 1. The second number is called the second term and it is defined by the symbol A sub 2 and so on. Here are some examples. You began school as a young child. You learned to recite all the counting numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So at the age of uh, 2 or 3, you can count maybe up to 20. So 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 20. So moving on, as a grader, you learn to a scale of uh, skip counting or having some multiples of a certain number. So you could have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. And you're even singing the multiples of 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. So those are examples of sequence. When the sequences goes on forever, it is called an infinite sequence. Otherwise, it is a finite sequence. Looking at our almost the same examples in two columns, finite has the end, while infinite has no end. And by symbol, from our examples, you will see these three dots. How do you call that? Yes, that's an ellipsis. Observe the following sequences, then answer what is being asked. Number one, one, three, five, seven, blank. And what is the next number? Observing the pattern, each term is being added by a constant number two. So therefore, the answer for number one is nine. Second problem, five, negative five, five, negative five. So what is the 20th term? Again, observe the process. Those positive fives belong to add positions of the sequence, while the even, even positions of the sequence belong to the negative fives. Since 20th is an even position, meaning the 20th term of this sequence is negative 5. Let us consider number 3, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, and what is the next number? Notice that each number is obtained 
by subtracting 2 to the previous number or we could say adding negative 2 to the previous number. Since the last number here is 0, so 0 plus negative 2, the answer is negative 2. For the fourth item, 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, what is the next number? This is a special sequence because we are adding 1 to the denominators. So therefore, next to 1 fourth is 1 fifth. A sequence can be formed using its end term or equation. And you've learned equation from everywhere like physics, like chemistry, linear equations, or quadratic equations in algebra. The symbol used for the nth term of the sequence is a sub n, which is also the last term of the sequence whose domain is a finite set 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The domain is being substituted to the variable of the general term. Later on, from our example, you are going to apply substitution process to form a sequence. And a gentle reminder for everyone, you must be good of substitution because you don't have a substitute at home to do it for you. Just do it. You can do it. Here's an example. Find the first five terms of the sequence. a sub n equals 5n plus 2 raised to n. For the first term, you are going to substitute n equals to 1, copy the equation, then plug in n equals to 1 since we are getting first term, then simplify 5 times 1 is 5, 2 raised to 1 is 2, so 5 plus 2 equals 7. Now, it's your turn to perform a sub 2 up to a sub 5. Start plugging in, pause the video, and check your answer later. And the answers are 14, 23, 36, and 57. And the first five terms are 7, 14, 23, 36, and 57. Another example. The general term of a sequence is a sub n equals 5n minus 2. Find the first five terms of the sequence. Again, for the first term, substitute n equals to 1. Copy the equation, then plug in n equals to 1 for the first term. Then simplify, 5 times 1 is 5. Then bring it down, minus 2, so 5 minus 2 equals 3. It's your turn. Kindly pause the video and simplify or, or solve a sub 2 up to a sub 5. And the answers are 8, 13, 18, 23. To finalize, our first five terms of the general term a sub n equals 5 n minus 2 are 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Another example. For the sequence denoted by a sub n equals n over n plus 1, find the first four terms. Plugging in n equals to 1 for our first term a sub 1 1 over 1 plus 1 again plug in the value of n equals to 1 for the first term simplify the numerator so that is ordinary 1 the denominator is 2 so our first term is 1 half I want you to pause the video and try to solve a sub 2 up to a sub 4 And the answers are 2 third for our second term, 3 fourth for our third term, and 4 fifth for our fourth term. So therefore, the first four terms 
of the sequence a sub n equals n over n plus 1 are 1 half, 2 third, 3 fourth, and 4 fifth. There are some conditions that you need to find the n term of a sequence. If the terms of the sequence are known, and we want to write a formula or an equation that will produce those terms given, then we ought to examine the terms so that we can generate or formulate a pattern for the nth term of the sequence. And again, for the next examples, you will need an extra effort. It's a difficult problem maybe, but it is actually a vice versa of the previous examples. And here is the problem. Consider the sequence 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Find the general term of these terms. So, doing this problem needs a better analysis or apparent patterns as we said. From the previous examples, we always start with n equals to 1, 2, 3, and so on, and expecting a result of 9, 12, 15. That is from before. But looking at the given a sub n, it has a difference as of 3. So, it says here that how many a multiples of 3 or how many 3's are needed to go back with those values of a sub n. So, let us plug in those 1 or those values of n. So, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3. But I guess they are not enough to fit in the original 9, 12, 15, and so on. So, for that case, you will need a constant number to be added with that first analysis. All of these numbers will be needing plus 6 to come up with the original a sub n. Meaning, for any term of this sequence, you will need a sub n is equal to 3n plus 6. It's quite hard, but let us try another example. Next example, find the general term of a sequence 18, 13, 8, 3, negative 2, negative 7, and so on. And from before, we always start with n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and so on. Expecting a sub n is equal to 18, 13, 8, 3, negative 2, and negative 7. Observing our a sub n, we all know from 18 going 13, or 13 going 8, we actually have the negative 5 being added to the previous term. So, negative 5 will be used to multiply with those values of n's, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And think of a number to be added with the result of those negative 5 times 1, negative 5 times 2, to come up with the original 18, 13, 8, and so on. So, by analysis, you will be needing 23, or plus 23, to come up with this a sub n, which are 18, 13, 8, 3, negative 2, and negative 7. Just keep on practicing, I guess. You will, you can analyze that finding the general term is not that very hard. So it follows that the general term of this problem is a sub n is equal to negative 5n plus 23. And the idea here, some other pointers here is you can apply what you have learned from grade 8 and grade 9, specifically finding the linear equations or finding the quadratic equation based from given points or given two points or three points. So those are just some of the tips. This time, you will be tested with the following five items. You can pause the video and check your answer later. And the answers are, did you get it right? Well done. And for the others, 
Just keep trying, and I know you can do it. And for our next meeting, there are special types of sequence to be discussed, and each type accompanies a shortcut to reveal the general formula or equation. And I know that those shortcuts will really work for our certain problem in, in our sequence. So good luck for that. And now let me end my discussion through this quotation. We make patterns, we share moments. May we all have good patterns to cross, and it's nice to have this moment with you all. Get those modules and answer those exercises assigned to you. And a gentle reminder, pass your module on time. See you again next time.